Hi friends, welcome to the small session on quantitative aptitude. Now this is an analysis session, an analysis of practice mocks, free test for RBI grade B phase 1. You can get it from their website. What is the agenda here in this session? I am not going to teach you much quant, when I will solve a lot of questions for you, but it is not about teaching. When it comes to a test like this, this is qualifying in nature, we understand and quant is just 30 questions but still it's important because we see that people miss the cutoff by you know a couple of marks at times one mark three marks four marks so the more you score the better chances of cracking it so here in this one uh, i don't know people called it tough a little on the tougher side if you get some marks 15 marks 10 marks 17 marks 20 marks, whatever it's going to boost your chances so that is the agenda it's qualifying but it's important nevertheless because many good candidates still miss out on this. We have already analyzed the general awareness section, the English section you know, going in that sequence given the test. So this is one and I will do reasoning as well. First let us look at the test and I will give you some gain about how to pick and choose questions. Let us just look at the questions first. All questions I will solve most of them and look at how they are. I did not find it too tough and unless you are you know. Uh, uh, you have an ambition to score a 28 out of 30. I don't I don't think you'll find it too tough. It's pretty manageable You just have to keep your mind open and I understand general awareness is very important here in this exam but Whatever marks you get out of quant and English and everything is going to contribute should not miss out on the cutoff So keep your eyes and ears open. Just uh, let's look at the paper first. You cannot have you know, not have much time here in this it's just uh, 25 minutes 30 questions it's not even one minute per question but if you, you know just keep your uh, mind open to it you can get some marks and that generally is enough so let us see how we can score some marks in this test i'll show you the questions now so this is the first question of this section of this test rather it's a set of two questions it's a basic one it's a very simple one you look at this what's given here these are two columns here column one and column two and you have to match so these are three quadratic equations you can see this here you have to match the roots just that and it's followed by two questions what do you do here the moment you look at this 104 104 what would you do you will not solve it complete you will just try and match it with the product so it would go here 13 into 8 104 204 what is it this is 12 into 17 it goes here and this one would be this thing so what is it which of the following relations is correct it's 1 c 2 a 3 b it's an absolute setter is that Find the correct relation between x and y. If we talk about x, 13 minus 8, y, 12 minus 17. So x can be greater than y, x can be less than y. Both are possible. You can see this. Fine. So if you take x as 13, y is minus 17, x would be greater. If you take x as minus 8 and y as 12, fine, which is possible, then it will be less. So it's all possible. This relation cannot be established. It's it's a question that should not take you more than 30 40 seconds both the questions combined it was so simple a very basic one quad equations let's move forward this is the next one again a question based on quadratic what does it say the equation this constant is missing it says c has two roots a and b such that a minus b is equal to 2 so what do we know the difference of the two roots is 2 they differ by 2 find the equation which is equal to thrice of the given equation now this is 30x if the two roots differ by 2 can we say that it would be something like this 14x plus 16x then only it can happen right 14x plus 16x you know how it works if it's like that what would be this constant 14 into 16 then only it can happen 14 into 16 how much is that 16 14 15 square minus 1 you can say 2 to 4 it would be of this form and this would be like that x square so this is the format only then it's possible the two roots would be minus 14 minus 16 it will work like this it's just for your understanding like that fine so this is going to give you this thing so roots would be minus 14 minus 16 which differ by 2 so you know it directly now it says thrice of the given equation thrice of the given equation it would be exactly three times means what this would become 90 and this 2 to 4 here would become three times that would be 672 so this becomes your answer here you don't have to do anything you just have to focus on this thing this thing this is 30x Difference is 2. So you think of 14, 16 directly. 14 into 16 is 224. 224 into 3, 672. This is going to give you the answer. As simple as that. Let us move forward. This is the next question. This is again on quadratic. The equation x square minus px minus 72 is equal to 0 has two roots a and b such that the difference is 18. Simple. Last time difference is 2. Here the difference is 18. And p is greater than 0. This is p here. p is greater than 0 means 
the sum is minus b upon a so this is p sum of the two roots is p sum is p and the product is minus 72 you know that so this is minus 72 product minus 72 sum p product minus 72 of two roots it means that one root is positive other root is negative look at this 72 now what comes to your mind 18 into 4 12 into 6 terms like that sum is p so when you look at this 12 into 6 72 it strikes why because you know that one root is positive one root is negative their difference is 18 so if i take the roots as plus 12 minus 6 it would be the same difference plus 12 minus minus 6 would give me 18 so two roots can be 12 and minus 6 it's apparent their product is 72 the sum is p what is their sum now the sum is plus 6 when p is greater than 0 it is okay so p becomes 6 here what is it that they are asking if a series starts with p such that consecutive terms are four more than the preceding term then find the fourth term of such series so what would be the answer p plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 so this is p plus 12 or you can say this is 6 plus 12 which is 18 which becomes your answer you don't have to solve it complete you just can do it by observation like that if you don't know sum and product of the roots you can leave this there are enough easy questions in the paper let us move forward this is the next question now what's given here it consists of two statements numbered one and two you have to decide whether the data provided in the statements are sufficient to answer the question the ratio of the present ages of a and b is 8 is to 5 find the ratio of present ages of c and d statement 1 c is 16 years younger to a and b is 10 years elder to d 16 years younger and this is 10 years elder b is 10 years so this would be if i talk about c upon d that would be equal to if i take this age as 8x minus 16 and this would be b is 10 years elder so d would be 10 years younger so this would be 5x minus 10 now this is special 8 upon 5 is same as 16 upon 10 and that is the reason you can just write as right this cancels this becomes 8 upon 5 had it been any other ratio you would not be able to find this and this is important this was given like that 16 and 10 had been 16 and 9 or something like that not be able to find that so yes this is sufficient what would you do now this is okay present age of c you will check for statement 2 is 60 percent more than that of b where the present age of d is 37.5 percent less than that of a 60 percent more 60 percent more means c right now would be 60 percent plus this is b so c becomes 8 8 units i'm just talking about units d is 37.5 percent less so d is 37.5 percent d would be 37.5 percent is 3 by 8 means you have to take the base of 8 it becomes 5 so answer again would be 8 upon 5 both of them alone would be sufficient this would be option c data sufficiency you have to be careful you do not do everything the questions that look doable in which you do not have to do a lot of work you can do them so this was easy even this was doable a question that can be done easily within a minute so this paper you've got 25 minutes 30 questions the target would be do some 15 20 25 questions whatever you can do according to your ability this is one such question you know so whatever you have seen till now all five questions they were all doable let's move forward this is the next one again a question on data sufficiency what is given here it says the perimeter of a rectangle is 240 centimeters find its area simple length of the rectangle is increased by 25 percent while its width is decreased by 25 percent then difference between length and width of the rectangle will be 70 centimeters what would i do i will not do anything i know that i can find it why do i know length of the rectangle is increased by 25 percent it means it becomes 1.25 l width is decreased by 25 percent so it becomes 0 0.75 width right the difference between length and width of the rectangle will be 70 centimeter now i know l plus w initially fine perimeter is 240 so this would be 120 this combined with this other equation will give you an answer isn't it it says this would i solve it no i know that length plus width is 120 from this length increased by 25 this is this width decreased by 25 this is this difference is 70 if i solve these two i'll get the answer means what this is sufficient would i solve this no this data sufficiency i just have to tell them whether this is sufficient or not look at the second one the sum of the length of two parallel sides 80 centimeter two parallel sides what would it be the smaller side so one side would be 40 other side would be then 40 plus uh, 120 this is uh, 80 so 40 80 would be the two sides so smaller sides parallel sides 40 double would be 80 this is what is given so this is also sufficient 
what would be the answer again it would be either statement alone would be sufficient to answer this question this first one is important i'll save time wherever possible i do not need to solve this because i know if i've got this i've got this i definitely am going to get the answer through this do i need to calculate the answer no let's move forward this is the next question now this is a set on data interpretation and it's a fairly doable one what is given here let me just read it quickly for you the given table shows the number of snakes number of uh, ratio of the number of snakes to number of birds and the difference between number of birds and snakes four different centuries number of snakes ratio of snakes and birds respectively and different between snakes and birds now this is absolute difference you don't know if snakes are more or birds are more unless it is mentioned so here you know that uh, birds are more here snakes are more in the second case no through the ratio but c is to d you do not know it's not given it's just difference absolute difference right you are required to find the variable data and answer the questions accordingly right so i'll not calculate a b c d i'll just look at the questions first if the number of cows in aranya is 2a find the sum of the number of birds and cows in aranya fine so what is given to me here it says 3 units snakes 8 units birds difference is 2000 so obviously 8 minus 3 here how would i think 5 so this 5 units is nothing but this 2000 it says sum of the number of birds and cows so birds would be 8 units 5 units 2000 1 unit if i have to calculate would be 400 basic unitary method birds 8 units how many would be birds it will be 3200 fine and cows how do i calculate number of cows in aranya is 2a now this is what number of snakes number of snakes would be 3 units number of snakes would be 1200 so this is 1200 a plus 400 is 1200 so how much is a a would be 800 and 2a would be 800 into 2 1600 so what is my answer this 3200 plus this 1600 which is 4800 not much work to do you could have done it mentally i have just written everything for you let me move to the next one this is the next question the number of birds in vatica is where is vatica this is vatica birds where are birds this is b minus 400 and everything is given in the form of b here right so this is 2500 what are the number of birds here this is 3 and uh, can we say that this would be equal to this is snakes 2500 which is 5 units 2500 5 units 3 units would be 1500 so we know that there are 1500 birds difference between number of snakes and birds is b minus 400 what is the difference birds are 3 units difference between snakes and birds is 2 units so 2 units is given to me as b minus 400 or 1000 i would say here which is the difference it is like that no 2500 snakes 1500 birds 1000 is difference 1000 is given to us as b minus 400 so what is 1500 which is the number of words that would be b minus 400 plus 500 Can you see this difference is 1000 number of birds is 1500 so that is 500 more than the difference here this difference is b minus 400 so what is the number of birds b minus 400 plus 500 how much is that that is b plus 100 you do not need to think about the value of b and all do it directly you can find it not take you time but this is more direct let us move forward this is the next question what does it say total number of snakes and birds in jona is 2200 so this is I think one other century that's not mentioned here in the list. If the ratio of the number of snakes and birds in Jona is d's to c, you're given c's to d here. This is d's to c, and find the number of birds in Jona. Note number of birds in Gulshan is not a multiple of thirteen, right? So here in this case, number of snakes is twenty-four hundred. Difference between snakes and birds is fifteen hundred. So birds can be either twenty-four hundred plus fifteen hundred or twenty-four hundred minus fifteen hundred. So if it's twenty-four hundred plus fifteen hundred, which will give you thirty-nine hundred. 3900 is a multiple of 13 yeah 13 into 339 so it means number of birds cannot be 3900 so what is the other possible number 2400 minus 1500 which is 900 so number of birds in gulshan has to be 900 snakes 2400 so what is this ratio snakes to birds there will be 2400 is to 900 or 24 is to 9 or we can simplify and say that this is 8 is to 3 so this is c is to d so what is this d is to c that would be 3 is to 8 what does it say find the number of birds in jona what is this this is snakes and birds birds would be 8 upon 3 plus 8 is 11 into 2200 this is how much 200 and this becomes 1600 again a simple one can be done really quickly there is no calculation involved so that becomes your answer let's move to the next one 
these sets are good they give you solid marks and it's same data so you not have to read it again and again not take you any time what does it say now the sum of the number of birds and snakes in van this is van snakes and birds so this is 4 is to 5 and the difference is given to you as 700 all right number of snakes is e plus 100 and everything is in the form of e what would you do if snakes are 4 units birds would be 5 units or can i say birds would be 700 more than snakes so what would you do e plus 100 into 2 plus 700 that's your answer isn't it 4 units snakes 5 units birds difference is given to you as 700 so number of snakes into 2 plus 700 so how much is this this is 2e plus 200 plus 700 how much is that 2e plus 900 you do not have to find the values no do it directly think like that 4 is to 5 4 units snakes you know it's e plus 100 5 units birds a little more how much more 700 so e plus 100 into 2 plus 700 gives you 2e plus 900 that becomes your answer can it be quicker no and it's a simple question let's move to this one what does it tell you find the difference between the number of snakes in gulshan gulshan number of snakes where is it it's 2400 and number of birds in watika watika is 2500 number of birds 3 i think we did that already both these numbers 1500 2400 minus 1500 that becomes 900 that was the easiest plot an absolute setter in fact this set had to be done all five questions there was absolutely nothing in it let's move forward okay what does it say two quantities one two and given you have to solve both and establish a relation now this is important a and b can do it this many days b and c in this many days a and c in this many days a typical question of time and work you know that but i would not do this why i've got limited time i can definitely do this but can you see this you have to first solve for this then solve for this then arrive at the answer would i do this no if i'm left with time in the end then probably but not now i'll move forward okay this one again quantity comparison what did it say the present age of a is this much present age of b is this much the ratio is this much find the value of okay let's read the second one as well just to get an idea ratio of income for a and b is 5 is to 8 a is increased by 40 percent so 40 percent increase this becomes 7 and income of b had been 12.5 percent less that's one eighth less so it's 7 is to 7 we are talking about find the difference between the incomes of a and b now why did i do this one and not the other one i was just reading it no? just a cursory look i realize there's nothing to solve here find difference between incomes of a and b just by an observation you can see this is 5 it becomes 7 this is 8 this becomes 7 difference is 0 now i am tempted to look at this quantity 1 as well what is it the present age of a is 2x plus y years present age of b is x plus 3y years the ratio of the present age is 9 is to 7 so 2x plus y upon x plus 3y is given to you as 9 upon 7 right find the value of 8y minus 2x just do this this is 14x plus 7y this is 9x plus 27y right so how much is this this becomes 20y is equal to 5x or you can say this is 4y x is equal to 4y x is equal to 4y means this quantity is also zero it means what that this number here would be d this option would be d quantity one is equal to quantity two and evolution i left the last one this one fine because i had to solve two arithmetic problems will not take much time but this one is really quick very quick and this is what you need to precisely identify you cannot miss that these numbers 40 percent more 12.5 percent less look at this you straight away know this is zero since you know this now you'll feel tempted to write this as well how much time it'll not take you more than 15 20 seconds so this whole question could have been done under a minute and that's the reason i did that this is the next one what does it say two quantities again find the 15th term of an arithmetic progression whose fourth term is this and eighth term is this fourth term and 18th term so how many terms are between 14 terms in between what is the difference between 83 and 27 83 minus 27 this is 56 so 56 is the total difference 14 terms in between you divide 56 by 14 you get the common difference of 4 it says 15th term find the 15th term so you know the 18th term 18th term is 83 so 83 minus 4 into 3 one common difference is 4 4 into 3 is 12 so 83 minus 12 is what we are talking about 71 it will not take you much time 15th term of the arithmetic progression but you cannot use the formula and all you just use observation common sense logic just that the sum of sum up to 15th and 14th term of an ap is this much and this much find the 15th term 
So this is sum till 15 terms. This is sum till 14 terms. So what is the 15th term? 376 minus 312, which is 76 minus 12, which is 64. So here this is 64 in the second one. So first answer is 71, 7 answers 64. What is my answer? Quantity 1, which is 71, is greater than 64. It becomes this one. Again doable if you understand what an arithmetic progression is. At times they give you some random questions. If you are not aware what an arithmetic progression, what a basic series is, it's okay. Otherwise, it's very doable and you do not need to use any A or D or anything. Just do it by observation. Let's go to the next one. What does it say? Again, a question based just in common sense. It says the two digits, there are two two digit numbers such that the sum of their unit digits is six, right? If the sum of the given two numbers is 136, sum of two two digit numbers is 136, then which of the following cannot be one of the numbers when their digits are interchanged? You just look at it. How do we do this? Look at this number 92. If I reverse 92, what would I get? 29. Now 29 added to any two digit number x, y, can it give you 136? No. 29, 136, difference is more than 100. It means what? 92 is not possible. This is my answer. I reverse 92, it gives you 29. 29 cannot be one of the original numbers. As simple as that. You look at this just by observation, you can answer this. Would I solve this? No. Had it been you know, a couple of such numbers, I would probably have left it. I do not have time to solve this. Let's move forward. What does it say? A mixture of, now this is a fill in the blank kind of equation. You can do this, you might leave this. The reason I'm saying you might leave this is because you have plenty of scoring options here. Now, in a fill in the blank kind of equation, you'll have to look at all these options just to check. It's not difficult. I'll show you. But yes, if you shorten time, you can probably think of leaving it because it'll take you some time to solve. A mixture of milk and water contains, now when you do not understand anything, no, uh, because you do not have much time, you look at the options, 1, 1 and 3, 1, so 1 appears 3 times, so let's put 1 here for example. So when I look at this, a mixture of milk and water contains 100% more milk, I am just assuming it is 100, the quantity of water would have been 40 liters more, if I just put this, and the quantity of milk would be 60% more or less like that, fine. And the total quantity is 480 liters. So 100% more, 100% more means it's double. So 480 liters, 100% more milk means you are saying this 480 is divided like this. It will be 48, this is 16, 160 and 320. Fine. So this is milk and this is water. Quantity of water would have been 40 liters more. So 160 plus 40 would be 200. This becomes new water. Then the quantity of milk would be 60% more or less than the water. Now you can you see this? 20 plus 60 percent is 320 so it satisfies it means what that this is definitely correct if this is correct this is ruled out this is ruled out now once you know that this is there this is definitely there the statement one or this one whatever this is this is two three in which we need to check look at the options now only one only one is possible this is possible this is also possible what would you check now this two or three you will check for two why because if two satisfies if this value satisfies look at this carefully then we know that the answer has to be 1, 2 and 3 because there is no such option as 1 and 2, right? We will check for 2 first. If 2 does not satisfy, then only we will need to check for 3 to ascertain if answer is this one or this one, right? So we will check for 2 first. What is 2? 2 is 40, 200, this is 40, this is 200 and this is 30, fine. This is 40% more milk, 40% is 2 by 5, so 7 units, 5 units, this 480 would be divided like this, this would be 200 water and then 280 milk can you see this this is five units and this is seven units like that 40 percent more milk if the quantity of water would have been 200 liters more so 200 plus 200 it becomes 400 this is 400 and this remains 280 then the quantity of milk would be 30 percent more or less 30 percent of 400 it is 120 is this okay yes 400 minus 120 is 280 it means it satisfies it means what that this value satisfies if one and two both satisfy Look at the possible answer option. This is ruled out then. 1 and 2 both satisfy. Are 1 and 2 here? No. This is also gone. So only answer options then. So it's implied here that 3 would also satisfy. Would I check? No, I would not check. I will move ahead. So again, this could have been checked pretty quickly in a minute or so. You do not need to solve this. Look at the options and then act smartly. This is the next one. Now, what does it say? A and C can do a work in this many, this many days. Ratio of A and B is this much. 
they start work together now this is again a very standard time and work question can be done you take one one and a half minute can be done really quickly short in time you can move ahead to capitalize on probably some easier questions otherwise you can do it you know how to do it and it's a very standard kind of a question It will not take you much time but yes you can leave it if you believe that you need to look at all 30 questions which is always important let's move forward what does it say a seller had this many red this many green and this many some yellow caps ram chose one cap at random such that the probability of picking a yellow cap by him is 3 by 10 simple data so out of every 10 caps three would be yellow which of the following statements is meant using the given data number of yellow caps you look at this you do not need to solve anything if you do not know probability just leave it if you know it you know the answer number of yellow caps can you find the number of yellow caps no you do not know the total number you know that yellow caps 30 percent so you cannot do this if you look at this so this option is gone this option is gone difference between 50 percent of this and total number of green caps 50 percent of red caps so 50 percent of red caps would be 0.5 x plus 60 and green so this 0.5x and 0.5x would cancel it means it would be like this you don't need to write this i'm just showing it to you 0.5x plus 60 would be 50 percent of red caps total number of green caps 0.5x plus 80 can you find the difference as a constant yes 80 minus 60 will be 20 so you definitely can do this fine how can we do this because it says 50 percent had it been 60 percent answer would be no you cannot find it but 50 percent and 50 percent 0 0.5 0 0.5 they cancel that's the reason you can find the answer Probability of drawing green cap? No, you do not need anything. I mean, you do not know anything here. Drawing green cap, how would you do this? This is red, this is green, this is yellow. You do not know anything. Not possible again. So what is it? It will be only two. If you know probability, it is an absolute setter. If you do not know it, do not worry. There is enough stuff to capitalize upon. This is the next one. A and B started a business with investments of this much and this much. After three months, A decreases investment as 4,000. B decreases investment at 4,000. And C joined by investing 16,000. Find the ratio of annual profit received by ABC. Again, a standard question type. What would you do? 4,000 as one unit of investment, one unit of money, you can say. And three months as one unit of time. Fine. So how much does A invest? 24,000. 24,000 would be six units for one unit of time. After that, he decreases by 4,000. It means it's five units. And for how many quarters? So this is A's investment, B's investment starts with 20,000 that is 5 units then increases by 4,000 so that would be 5 plus 1 6 into 3 and C's investment joins after 3 months with 16,000, 16,000 by 4 would be 4 units, 4 units for 3 time periods. It's like that. So how much is this? This is 21, this is 23 and this is 12 can be done really quickly if you do not need the actual numbers not use the actual numbers use these numbers simplify them accordingly like that let's move forward a car and a bike with the ratio of speeds 5 to 3 respectively start running at 4 a.m and 9 a.m respectively in the same direction at 1 p.m the car stopped 1 p.m the car stopped so car started at 4 a.m 1 p.m this is 9 hours at let's say a speed of 5x so 5x into 9 so this is the total distance traveled by car and bike matched the speed of the car and traveled for six more hours. So bike traveled at 5x for six hours and before that bike was traveling at 3x. Fine. So let me write this here. For how many hours? Started at 9 a.m. So 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. Four hours. So this is the total distance traveled by bike. Find the total distance traveled by bike and car together. The difference between their distances is 180. Very simple. So this is how much. By car would be 45x and by bike would be 30 and 12 42x right the difference is 3x you know that this 3x is 180 and what they are asking you to find is the sum so 45x plus 42x this is 45 and this is 87x this is 3x 180 you need to find 87x this is how many times this is 29 times and 3x to 87x difference is 3x sum is 87x so what would be the answer 180 into 29 should end with a zero no option ends with a zero here answer becomes none of these would i find the actual answer no i don't need to hope you understood 3x is 180 kilometers the difference sum is 87x so from 3x to 87x 29 times 118 to 29 has to be the answer it's not there in the options because the answer has to end with a zero answer becomes none of these look at the small things look for these small things they make a job easier okay what does this one say 
Time taken by a boat to travel this much in downstream is same as this much in upstream. This looks like some data. We can do this, not take you much time, but since we are running against time, I'll leave this for now. Let's move forward. The perimeter of a square is 56. The radius is circle is 150 more than the length of okay. So what is the side of the square? 56 by 4. This is 14 centimeter. Radius of circle is 150 percent more. 150 percent is 3 by 2. 150 percent more means 5 by 2 times. So radius would be equal to 14 into 5 by 2, which is equal to 35. This is what we have got here. Find the difference between the area of the square and the area of the circle. Area of the square is very simple. That would be 14 into 14. And what is the area of the circle? This would be 22 by 7 by approximate 22 by 7 into 35 into 35. Fine. So this is 7, 5. How much is this? This is 110, 110 into 35. So 3500. This is 3850. So 3850 minus this is 196. So 3650 plus 4. So this is 3654 centimeter. Is it calculative? No, I did mentally, right? Like that. All right, let's move forward. This was a question that had to be done. What does this one say? A and B had rupees X plus 800, 3X minus 600 with them. A invested in some at simple interest of 20% per annum for four years. So that is how much? 80%. 80% in all or 4 by 5 of the principal. And received rupees this much as interest. Now, 80% of this much is how much? So there will be 0.8x plus 80 this would be 640 now this it says is equal to x plus 520 so this is 0.2x equal to 120 or x would be equal to 600 we can solve this for x very quickly which of the given statements are correct according to the given information x is equal to 400 is definitely incorrect a had rupees this much more than b so a had how much a would be equal to x plus 800 this is 1400 and b would be 1600 minus 600 this is 1200 so these are the numbers that we have a had rupees 200 more yes that's correct and ratio of the sum of a and b is 7 to 6 that's also correct so 1 and 3 answer becomes this much again nothing that you could not have done isn't it very much doable let us look at this one what does this one say? The ratio of cost price on article A and B is 9 is to 5. The loss incurred on selling article A is equal to the profit earned on selling article B. What does this mean? Okay, this is also given. Selling price of articles A and B are equal. So it is like this. This is A, this is B, this is cost price 9, 5. Selling prices are equal and the loss here on A is same as profit on B. It means what? They should be 7, 7. Only then it will be equal. Fine. So here it's a loss of 2. Here it's a profit of 2. Right. So selling price becomes 7 units. It's like that. Selling price of article C would be how much more than the profit earned on selling article B such that article C costs 60% more than article B. Article C costs 60% more than article B. So article B cost is 5. Fine. If you look at this, so 5, it becomes 8. Fine. And sold at 25% loss. So 25% loss means it would be sold at 6. So these are the numbers here. And what is it asking? Selling price of article C would be how much more than profit earned on selling article B. So profit earned on article B is 2 and selling price of C, this is CP for all and this is SP for all. And, and selling price, selling price of article C would be how much more than the profit earned on selling article B. Profit earned on selling article B is, you can see, 2 units and selling price of C would be 6 units. So difference is 6 minus 2, that is 4. So 4 is how much? or what percentage of 2 that's 200 percent so it's 200 percent more than the profit earned on article b article b earned a profit of two units on c it's six units selling price is six units difference is four four is 200 percent of article b profit earned on article b let's move to the next question now this is again a fill in the blank kind of a question four years ago ratio of ages of a and b was this much and ratio of the present age is 32 two years hence from now age of this will be this much how many again simple data what do you have to do look at the options one two three everything seems to be present one thing that you no know, kind of tells me this this would be slightly tricky would be that none of these is there but still you just have to put and check so i'll just show one of them to you it says five is to seven so we are checking this five is to seven and it says this is 20 
what does it say some of their present age is 32 years this was 4 years ago 4 years ago some would be 32 minus 4 into 2 so that's 24 years right this is the first step ratio is 5 to 7 5 7 12 so the ages would be 10 and 14 this is a and this is b first step two years hence from now age of a will be this much more two years hence so this is about two years from today and this is the scenario four years back so if you have to move from four years ago to two years hence we'll add six so a would be 10 plus 6 16 and b would be 14 plus 6 20 age of a will be this much percent less than that of b so this is yes 20 percent less if you look at this 20 percent of 20 would be 4 so 20 minus 4 would be 16 it satisfies so this is there so it means what that this is ruled out and uh, since none of these is there you'll have to check for everything so likewise you check for two three not take much time one one and a half minute but can be checked because the value is simple so while doing this do not make stereotypes like i'll not do fill in the blanks i'll do fill in the blanks look at the data and then decide but a pretty doable question i'll move to the last one this is a set again a di set of five questions some people found it calculative yes there is some calculation but it is still you know if you've got some time you could have done this i just do this for you the given data is about number of pots made by Zen and Zayed in three different months. Number of pots made by Zen in June is 25% more than that in May. And so this is about May, June, July. Right? This is May, this is June, and this is July. It's like that. The data is for three months. And these two guys are, this is Zen, and this is, right? So you'll make a small table like that. Number of pots made by Zen in June is 25% more than that in May and 36% less than that in July. The only troublesome number that I see here is this 36%. Right. So what I'll do is if I take this as 100x, 36% less than that in July. So this will be 64x. Right. And it says number of pots made by Zen in June is 25% more than that in May. So 25% more. So we'll have to do 4 by 5 into 4 by 5 to arrive at this main number. 4 by 5, if you do not want to deal with decimals, do one thing. Multiply both by 5. So I'll rather write this. If I make this as 500x, this would be 64 into 5. That will be 320x. Right? These are assumptions. You can take anything. Now 320 into 4 by 5. This is what you'll get. So 320 into 4 by 5. You will subtract 64 from it, you will get 256x. So these values are consistent. You could have taken anything. I just took 500, 320, 256 so that we can avoid decimals. Just that. I knew that I will need to multiply this with 4 by 5 to arrive here. So I introduced a 5 in the numerator. Just that. You got this. Let's do it for Zayed. In May, Zayed made 140 pots less than Zen. So Zayed made 256x minus 140. All right. Number of pots made by Zayad in June is 300 more than that in May. So this number here plus 300. So what would it result in? This would be 256x plus 160 and 700 less than that in July. So 700 less than that in July means this would be July would be 256x plus 700 plus 160. So that will be 860. Now you've got everything in the form of this x. In July, total number of pots made by Zen and Zayat together is 2750. So what we do we have here? 500x plus this much is 2750. Just do it quickly. So how much would this be? This is 750. I'm just writing it here. 756x plus 860 is equal to 2750. This is what we have got. Or we can say that 756x would be equal to this minus this so how much would this be 1890 and this is x would be equal to just divide it 750 into 2.5 is 1875 this is exactly 2.5 times so yes some calculation but nothing that you cannot handle so this is x 2.5 now you substitute so this is how much this is 1250 this would be equal to 800 this is 640 i'm just multiplying everything by 2.5 and this would be 640 minus 140 this is 500 
and this is uh, again a difference of 300 so this becomes 800 now this one was simple and this would be 1500 so you've got all the numbers fine what are these numbers may june july zen 640 800 1250 640 800 1250 zaid 500 800 1500 you've got this now the question is not taking much time. this table making this table take two three minutes but yes this is five solid marks for you now you can do this very quickly Let's read the questions. In July, Zen made pots at the rate of 20 pots per hour. Find the total time taken by Zen to make all the pots in July. Zen, July, 1250 at the rate of 20 pots per hour. So, how much would this be? 1250 divided by 20. This goes into 62.5. This becomes your answer. Very simple, isn't it? Let's move to the next one. This is the second question of the set. What does it say? In June, if 45% of the pots made by Zen and 75% of the pots made by Zayed were of plastic, find the total quantity of plastic consumed in making given number of pots such that 200 grams of plastic is required to make two pots or basically 100 grams for one pot. Now it says 45% by Zen and 75% by Zayed. This is June. This is June. So Zen made 800. Zayed also made 800. Look at this. Zen, June. This is 800. Look at the pointer. 800. Zayed, June. 800 so 800 800 so it simplifies the task for us 45 percent plus 75 percent 45 percent of 800 plus 75 percent of 800 45 plus 75 is 120 so 120 percent of 800 this is the total number so this is 12 uh, this would be 96 yeah or i would say 960 so 960 pots in all so one pot uses 100 grams two pot use 200 grams one pot uses 100 grams so how much would this be this would be 96 kilograms which is this option again nothing very simple if you have got this table with you this is third question of the set let's read the question or the total number of pots made by Zayed in May and June together 60% were painted red find the number of pots made by Zayed in May and June together that were painted red very simple 60% Zayed May and June Zayed May 500 look at this pointer June 800 500 plus 800 1300 so this is made by Zayed in May and June 60% of this number just that 60% of this number 13 into 6 78 answer would be 780 as simple as that let's move to the next one Look at this one now. This is question number four of the same set. For Zen, 25% of the number of pots made in May, 25% of the number of pots made in June, and 20% in July got sold. Find the total number of pots sold by Zen in the given three months. So where is Zen? 640, 25% would be 160. It got sold in May. June, 25% of 800. Look at the pointer, 25% 800 Zen. That's 200. And this last month july look at the pointer 1250 20 percent of 1250 1250 divided by 5 which is 250 so this all got sold how much is this this is 450 plus 160 which is 610 and this is question number five the set the last question is that and zen worked for only 25 days and 20 days respectively in june then find some of the average number of pots made per day by them in june whereas june june zen made 800 and Zen worked only for 20 days. So this 800 by 20. 800 by 20. So he made 40 pots per day. And uh, Zayed 25 days. So 800 by 25. So 25, 30 is uh, 750. So this is 32. So 40 pots per day were made by Zen in June. And 32 pots per day were made by Zayed in June. It says find the sum of the average number of pots made by them. So it's the sum of 40 and 32 which is 72 which becomes an answer so you could see that this was like fairly doable once you form this table and making this table one minute two minutes but for a five marker like this in which the questions were easy and you know you have a look at the questions before going on to solve anything this i would consider to be fairly doable this could have given you some quick marks so how did you find it I'm sure you'd not find it very tough. I must have solved some 25 questions for you, 25 questions and all the questions that I solved here, you would agree with me, you'll have to agree with me that they were not very tough. Yes, I understand you do not have a lot of time here. I left a few questions as well, even they might be not that difficult, but I just wanted to leave something. The exercise that you need to do after this, I'm not asking you to do all 25 questions that I did. No, that's not possible in an exam. If you're very good in quant, maybe. But the exercise that you need to do now is look at this again, the test again, all 30 questions and ask yourself 
how many questions could you have done in those 25 minutes when you looked at this test for the first time for the first time not after this when after this you know you reflect back on the test and ask yourself honestly had you performed optimally on the day according to your capability if you are weak at maths do not you know aim for a 25 in this no according to your capability only ask yourself how much could you have got and i'm sure there'd be some learning for you at times we make mistakes i might be good i might be bad but i'll still end up making a few mistakes when it comes to test taking skills it's two things no your general ability in the subject and your test taking skills so at this stage when the exam is just a few days away we cannot work too much on the ability in the subjects but can make some difference in the test taking skills so after watching this you must have realized oh i could have done this question i did not read it i could not reach the last set i did not uh, you know uh, pay attention to that question in which there were just two digits reversed and you know, all such things so what can you do what can you do quickly to fix it just pay a little more attention to it make a list of the things that you did not do right or did not do optimally in this test no there will be certain things where you would say oh i should have got this realistically not after sir told me no after i tell you everything looks easy then many people say that but just think about it objectively and tell yourself itna to aana chahiye tha i should have got this i made a mistake and i'm not asking for much i just want you to not repeat the same mistakes just that do not repeat the same mistakes if you believe you could have got say 15 questions correct here i'm not saying a 25 or a 30 get to that 15 you will not get to take this test again it doesn't you know uh, benefit much if you repeat the test but in the next test whatever is that kind of a score you should get now it might be different from this test other test and that some other test no it, it can keep happening but what i'm saying is do not repeat that same mistake so that score for you can be 12 it can be 15 it can be 18 it can be 22 based on your current ability in the subject in quantitative aptitude and you cannot change it much in the last few days so what is the focus on the focus is or should be just on improving your scores according to your current capability it can be 12 it can be 15 it can be 20 it can be 25 believe me 15 would be a good score in this test 99 percentile you can get at what in totality i'm telling you around 75 70 cent marks i believe 15 20 here would be a very good score if you can cross at 25 you are wonderful fine but yes you will need to look back at this you can take still take a few mock tests before the actual exam take a few mock tests there is nothing else that you need to do at this point and try and improve with every test improve in the sense that i'll not make any silly mistakes i'll not leave any easy questions i'll try to it's easier said than done fine i'll not get stuck in a uh, tough question so you get stuck in a question in the beginning and then you cannot just check the questions towards the end it happens with everyone should not happen so you should like these are 30 questions so 25 minutes it should be 30 divided by 25 like that or 25 divided by 30 whatever way you want to look at this but the time should be distributed equally you should not say since the questions that appear in the beginning appear in the beginning that take the bulk of my attention they can be the tougher questions in the paper so some things some very basic things focus on it and you should be able to optimize the score the idea is not to get a perfect score the idea should at this point just be to optimize the score optimize the score means i'll get the best that i can get according to my capability my ability in the subject it's not that difficult look back at this test and try and find out how much did you score how much you could have scored try and reduce that gap in the next one fine so if you got a 12 for example you look at back at this and realistically you think a 17 was possible for you so there is a deficit of those five marks just try and cover the deficit in the next mock test two three tests like that and no uh, who knows you might perform very well optimally in the actual exam and this is the target right so do this exercise i'll see you again with the reasoning one if not watch general awareness english please do that and try and optimize the score many good people miss out on this in phase 1 i do not want this to happen with you keep working hard good luck